Hey, welcome back to the Rising Star Podcast, live every Friday, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. Today, I'm excited because everyone has been asking, okay, due to popular demand, Cody, please put your book on audio. I love listening to audio, and I do too, so I get it. So the ne- the next several Rising Star Podcasts, I'm going to be literally reading a chapter of my book. And so I'm going to set it up. I'm going to read it, and I'm going to talk about it afterwards, okay, so that you can actually get each chapter separately for free. And then later you can go buy the whole thing together, high produced, all that for like 10 or 20 bucks. Okay. So I'm going to walk through this again, zero to six figures. I wrote this, we released it like, it's crazy. I've been so busy. We released it like seven months ago. Okay. So I'm sorry. I'm just not getting around to this, Uh, but I am not going to read the forward. I am not going to read the contents, but I am going to read the introduction and chapter one today. If you want to go from zero to six figures, if you believe you're a rising star, then you will love this book. Like it breaks it down so simple. I would say, I, w- I would argue that when it comes to, from to, to, to trying to be new to the industry and make six figures, I would argue it's the best book in the industry that the industry's ever had, that the industry's ever released, by the way, on this specific topic, right? So I'm gonna walk through this thing, okay? I, I love that you guys are rising stars. I love that you listen to it, everything we're doing. I love that you tune in. Um, and I love that, hey, maybe you need the physical book too, okay? It's on Amazon, go check it out. Here's the introduction. I believe we should stop playing life so small. One day when they say the word insurance, I want them to say that dude did more for the insurance industry than anyone else on planet earth ever. I'm Cody Askins and I was a new agent not too long ago. I started as an intern calling out the phone book before I really even knew you're not supposed to be doing that. I feel like I get and understand new struggling insurance agents. Most people in our business are not the dude making seven figures, rolling in it and traveling the world. Most people in our industry are struggling. Some even have part-time jobs, all the different products, carriers, commission levels, independent or captive. Holy frick, they don't even know what to do. This is where I come in. I want, I want to be the guy that can really go to, that you can really go to, to gain some knowledge and really help them. I was very fortunate to earn $117,300, and, and Dylan, this is actually wrong, by the way, $361.13 in my first eight months. It's actually $391. We found out later. Dylan corrected me. And I thought, if I can do that, I can probably help other people too. I have a passion for this business, but it isn't easy. And 92% of salespeople fell within the first three years, but there are also more millionaires in the industry than any other industry in the world. It's time to take back control of your life. There's going to come a point in the next 12 months when something doesn't go your way. You'll also be challenged in a way you didn't see coming. We feel like we're getting peop- getting pulled underwater and we're about to drown. We can't do anything right. There's nothing's going our way. We think we're going to fail. We're not sure if we can make it. We can't even afford leads, but we know we want to succeed. Eric Thomas says when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. That's the difference between a lot of people who are successful and unsuccessful. How badly do you want to be successful? Will you do whatever it takes? Throughout this book, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to make your goals and dreams a reality. It all starts with your mindset. You have to get your mind right before you can even begin. And a huge part of this comes from my morning routine and yours. I'm going to share with you my morning routine and how it helps me jumpstart my day every single day. You have to be in the right frame of mind if you're going to survive in this business, but I don't want you to just survive. I want you to thrive. Part of thriving is setting goals. Goals are one of the most important things you can ever do and have for yourself. Without goals, you're just driving around aimlessly with no destination. So I'm going to show you how to set goals and push yourself further than you've ever dreamed possible. I'll also give you tools along the way to help you achieve those goals. I'm going to show you how to be more confident and how to be consistent when it comes to getting in front of prospects and making sales. We're going to go in depth on how to handle objections so you can literally tackle anything they throw at you. And I mean anything, just ask my team. You might even pick up some tips on how to handle the dreaded, where do you want to go to dinner question. And by the time we're done, you'll be a master at closing because we are going to cover multiple types of closes so you will have a full arsenal in your tool belt. I'm telling you, there won't be anything that you can't handle. I know this all sounds fantastic, incredible, and amazing. I'm telling you now, this isn't going to be a walk in the park. It won't be easy. You have to have commitment and dedication. But I'm here to help you by taking out of 
all the taken out all the guesswork. I'll show you how to be successful at working the phone, how to build those underrated but oh so important relationships with your prospects, and most importantly, how to make how to, how to make it all make sense for you and to make the money you've always wanted. You're in the right place, and I can tell you're serious. I believe the most important thing to be successful in this business is when agents like yourself right now spend money and take time to invest in themselves. We are building a massive following in the insurance industry to help agents, and I want to help you. Chapter one, get your mindset right. Whatever you want to have, you have to decide to go get it. Read that again. Whatever you want to have, you have to decide to go get it. I fully believe this. Always have and always will. No one is going to do it for you and no one is going to give it to you. Nobody said, here, Cody, let me give you leads. Let me give you motivation, dedication. Let me feel your desire and passion for more. No one did that for me and no one is going to do that for you either. Sure, you might have some amazing people in your corner cheering you on, and if you do, that's amazing. This is something that will be incredibly helpful, but the biggest, even the biggest cheerleader won't make you do something. They won't make you show up when things suck and it feels like nothing is going your way. They won't. Showing up is something that has to come from you. It has to come from your desire to do more and to be more. Consistency is the name of the game, and of any game, really. Are you going to show up and be consistent? If you're not, hey, best of luck to you. But if you're willing to put in the work, I'm willing to help you. So right now, you need to make the decision to show up in order to go up. I know you can do it. I see it every day in my office. I see these guys coming in when they're sick or when yesterday was the worst day they've had in a long, long time. When all the normal things they try don't seem to be working. But there is one thing that always will. Consistency and showing up for yourself. First things first. I highly recommend a morning routine. I know some people don't believe in them, and I know others, myself included, live and die by them. Having a morning routine, adding structure to your day, and utilizing very specific things to kickstart my day have always been very instrumental in my success. I'm going to show you this morning routine I adhere to every day. I call this the Daily Power Five, and I commit to it seven days a week. Yes, I said seven. Daily Power Five, the 5 a.m. club. First step, my daily power five is waking up between 5 and 5.59 a.m. every morning. We call this the 5 a.m. club. For some of you, this will be easy. For others, it won't. It's the little adjustments we make and pushing ourselves that will propel us from good to great. I believe it isn't meant to be. It's up to me. I believe it. it, 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 it I believe if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Sell is a mental game and only a struggle, struggle if you make it one. Mental toughness is everything. Welcome to the club. Seconds workout. Get your blood pumping and your body moving. Having a hard workout first thing in the morning is exactly what I need to wake myself up and get prepared for the day ahead. A daily morning workout helps get your energy level up, get you focused in the right frame of mind. In, the, in this business, I believe that mindset is everything. If you don't push yourself, no one else will. Number three, write down your goals. Everyone should have goals. If you don't, where are you going? You, you, you won't get there. Are you staying stagnant or are you pushing for more? With a 92% failure rate in insurance sales, being average just isn't cutting it. If you didn't have goals to achieve great things, you wouldn't be reading this book. Starting today and every single day after this, you need to write down what you want to accomplish. Don't just think about it. Actually write it down. It's amazing what, hap what starts to happen when you set it, write it down every day and focus on making it a reality. When goal setting, you, when goal setting, you want to look at the short term, long term, and anything else you want to accomplish. For example, Set goals for every month, year, and long term. Something you will accomplish someday. These could be what your income is going to be every month and year, or what you want it to increase every month. Just make sure you're writing them down and pushing yourself to think bigger. Here are some of my personal goals. A Person Nation has 10,000 agents in attendance. We sell a million dollars every 30 days. We generate over $100 million in total company revenue. We own a beach house, a vision jet, and a helicopter. We own 1,000 apartment units. Writing down my goals every day keeps me humble and always thinking bigger. Number four, learning and training. One of the keys to growth is learning and the day and, and the day we stop learning is the day we stop growing. I make it a point to learn something new every single day. Not only learn something new, but to physically train or role play so that you can apply it in the near future. I do this by watching videos, reading books, listening to podcasts and audiobooks. Just stay open to new information and always be willing to learn. The other key aspect of learning is training. 
Once I've learned something new, I can incorporate it into my training videos or put it in my YouTube channel. Another of my favorite things to do is to role play what I've learned. This is something that we do in the office every day, twice a day. The quickest way to master something new is to train and practice it every single day. And number five of the Daily Power Five, cold shower. I end every shower with a cold shower. Did you just cringe? I know you did. Most people will read through the first four items of my Daily Power Five thinking that it is easy enough to do, but a cold shower. Why, Cody? The very obvious answer is that this is a great way to wake up. But here's the thing and hear me out. This forces me to do something that I don't want to do. Now, you're probably thinking, why would I force myself to do something I don't want to do in the first place? When you're forced to do something you don't want to do, the next time something else comes up that you don't want to do, you'll be more likely to do it. A perfect example of that is making more than just one sales call. If you've had a bad day and you can't imagine making one more call, you'll have to force yourself to pick up the phone. Forcing yourself to make one more call could mean the difference between making a sale or not. So end every shower with a cold shower. Step outside of your comfort zone and do something you don't want to do to start your day. As I said earlier, I highly recommend a daily routine. It's powerful, beneficial, and needed. It's so important to get yourself in the right frame of mind. By keeping your energy up, staying focused, and working on your mindset, the days that don't go your way won't be that big of a deal. You'll be more positive. It'll be easier to just let things roll off your back. By staying positive, you'll be able to power through but how does one stay more positive, Cody? Great question. I have some tips, 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 and tricks for that too. One way to do that is to focus on the things you can control. Every salesperson has certain things that are out of their control, but there are always things that they can control, such as how many calls you make today, how many appointments did you set for the week, did you decide to skip door knocking because you weren't comfortable with it, or did you force yourself to do something uncomfortable, like the cold shower? This is not all inclusive to sales. This is a life hack right here. There are always things you will be in control of, like what time did you wake up, getting your workout in no matter what, how much you want to skip it, and writing down those goals. You will have days when you don't want to do any of it. I still do. But I also still make myself go through all of my morning routine. All of these things are a part of adopting the right mindset. But it goes even further than that. Let's focus on what you can control. I like to call these things three A's within your control. The first being attitude. Right now, I want you to take a second and think about your attitude. Is your attitude positive? Or do you have a tendency to be a negative person who's always complaining? I also want you to think about the things that support you in having a positive attitude. If working out causes you to have a better attitude, then don't you think you should probably work out? Not to mention it's part of my daily power five. What else puts you in the right frame of mind? Having the right frame of mind or positive attitude determines how well you will do. Now, does that mean you are going to have a good day every day? No, but by having a good attitude, when something doesn't go the way you planned, it will make it easier to bounce back. Something I do every day is checking my attitude on my way into the office. Am I in the right frame of mind? Am I being a good example? If not, I shift my mindset because this is something I can control. Action. The second A stands for action. You can even think of it as activity. What is the action or activity you are putting forth? If I ask you to dial 100 numbers, this is something you can do. This is something you can control. You may not want to dial 100 numbers, but you can. It is within your control. If you control the action, then you control your outcome. Third A, attention. The last of the three A's you can control is how attentive or the amount of focus you have. What I mean by this is always being in the moment. Are you fully in the moment? Are you present? Are you in the right frame of mind? Are you being intentional? When I was playing basketball, one, one thing my father always used to tell me was he could always tell that my focus was on point when I got down and slapped the floor on defense. I was in the zone. What do you do to make sure you are in the zone and ready? Are you giving it your full attention and firing on all cylinders? All these things are completely within your control. Since they are within the, your control, you should work to control them every single day. When you show up with the right frame of mind and control the things you can, it is amazing how well you can do. When it comes to sales, anybody can do, anybody can be good at it, but why be good in sales when you can be the best? Why have a crappy attitude when you give a positive one? Because your attitude is positive. When you're doing things you can control, I promise you, you'll see more outcomes going your way, but let's take it a step further than that. Every great salesperson has a very specific set of qualities. I've seen many veteran salespeople who, when missing, 
just one of these qualities, they don't produce nearly the results that they're capable of achieving. To go from good to great, there are a few things every salesperson needs to have. I call these the eight C's every great salesperson has. The eight C's every great salesperson has. Number one, coachable. Are you coachable? Do you want to get better? I would take a bad salesperson who's coachable over a great salesperson with an ego any day. I've seen a lot of great salespeople that don't make it in this company because they let their ego get in the way. They just aren't coachable and that is their downfall. Great people know they can always improve. So in order to succeed, you have to be coachable. How coachable are you? Second C, courage. Do you have the courage to do whatever it takes to succeed in this business? Are you, how willing are you to do what it takes to hit your goals? Are you willing to do the hard stuff? Or are you just going to turn tail and run as soon as it gets hard? You have to have the courage to step outside of your comfort zone. Remember, cold shower. Don't like it make, making phone calls. Do it anyway. Don't like knocking doors at a retirement community. Do it anyway. When you have the courage to step up and do what others aren't or won't, things can make you things that can make you uncomfortable. That is when the magic happens. That is when you hit those goals. That is when you become unstoppable. So step up and stand out. Third C, commitment. To be successful in sales, you have to be committed. How committed are you? Show up. Do the work. If you love the product and believe in the product, you're going to make a difference in your clients' lives. You have to believe in what you're selling. I believe that wholeheartedly. You have to believe it too. If you don't, then this isn't for you. This is why 92% fail within their first three years because they aren't committed. Be committed to going the extra mile. Are you showing up every day? Are you doing what it takes to grow? Are you committed to learning and improving yourself? Are you challenging yourself to be better every single day? I want to ask you right now, and I want you to ask yourself, how committed are you? Did you give it your all and leave everything on the table? Or could you have done more? Could you have pushed harder? Be committed and I promise you, you'll see the results. Fourth C, control. As a salesperson, you have to be in control. If you aren't, that means that the prospect is in control. This does not mean you have the gift of gab and you talk the whole time. I make more sales when the prospect talks more than I do. I can be in control of the call and not be the only one talking. You can ask questions. You gain control. You steer the path of conversation. This is how you take control and you must be in control. It's a feeling. You can tell if you aren't in control. And if you're not in control, you will not make the sell. When that happens, you just have to bring it back. It's just like in basketball when the forward's dominant dribble is to the right side. To take control... Just turn them to the left. One little shift is all it takes. Fifth C, confident. Next is confidence. Great salespeople are naturally confident. You've been around them before and you know what I'm talking about. The personal swag they have, the way they carry themselves. You can be confident while still being humble. They take charge. It is as if they are saying, I am confident in my ability to get it done. I'm confident in the company. I'm confident in the product or service. I'm confident that I have the ability to make this sell. Confidence is key. Number six, certainty. Certainty is another level of confidence. I'm certain that I will make the sell. I'm certain this is a service that they need. I'm certain they will answer the call. When you get certain about the fact that you should make this sell right now, or you are doing the prospect and their family a massive disservice, is a whole new level of believability. When you get to this point of certainty, you will make sales that you don't think you will make. A perfect example of this is one of the salespeople had followed up with a prospect 20 times. They sent five emails and had 15 phone calls and they couldn't get her to buy. I said, look at me, say right now out loud, I will get it done on this call. She is going to buy and I'm certain it's going to happen. He said it, he got on the phone and he made the sell. All because he believed on another level. When you believe on a certainty level, it's amazing what you can do. You can end up getting people to buy that you never thought you could sell. Number seven, consistent. These are the salespeople that show up every day, whether they want to or not. They make the calls whether they want to or not. These are the people that put in the work no matter what. They show up and they are consistent day in and day out for long periods of time. They say great salespeople make decisions quickly and change them slowly. They don't change their consistency or their output on a day-to-day basis. They show up for long periods of time. It's like my coaches used to say, long obedience in the same direction. When this happens, you have a better chance of getting the sell and a better chance of getting great long term. Next C, conviction, which is number eight. When you know what you are talking about, 
When you believe what you are saying and you know it to be true with every fiber of your being, this is conviction. You can feel it. The prospect can also feel it. Now you are taking your conviction and making them to believe it. This is taking believability to the next level. When the prospect believes, because you believe so strongly that you believe enough for both of you, that's conviction. These are the eight C's that every great salesperson has and that you need to be great to, to be great at sales too. If you read through all these and are thinking, dang, I don't have all of these, Cody. Don't worry. You can develop them. Anyone can be coachable. It's all about your approach to things. Try thinking about life the way you did when you were a kid. You always had questions and you were always wanting to learn more. Adopt that beginner mindset and you will become coachable. Do the stuff that scares you, especially if it scares you. When you make a commitment to honor it, when you make a commitment, honor it. If you aren't good at doing that, don't make hard to keep commitments. Start with the small stuff. That's something you can control. Speaking of control, honestly, this should be a breeze by now. Confidence, on the other hand, isn't just something people are innately born with. Sure, it happens, but you can train yourself to be confident. Learn material. Practice what you've learned. When you've practiced and rehearsed 100 times, the only option is for you to get better. This is the same thing for certainty. You'll get to a level of confidence where you're just certain you're going to be a rock star. Speaking of awesomeness, I've got some more ways for you to up your sales game in the next section. If you're ready to really dig in, let's take it to the next level together. Take it to the next level. Motivation. There are some tips I try to do every single day and they pay off. Everyone gets bored and complacent from time to time. I'm no different, but there are several things you can do to overcome this when you notice you're in a rut. When you, get, when you eat healthy food, you feel good. When I feel good, I sell better. Do I love having a foot-long chili cheese off from Sonic? Who does it from time to time? But how am I going to go to someone's house after eating all that food and sell? You can't sell if you're in a food coma because you need to be focused. If I'm not focused, I'm not the best Cody Askins I can be because I'm not at my peak. To make you the best you that you possibly can be, you need to eat healthy food. I always feel better after eating a healthy meal instead of feeling bogged down and heavy. The second tip is to work out. Do something. I'm not saying you have to spend hours killing in the gym. Typically, I work out 30 to 60 minutes a day. But starting out, it wasn't that way. I love the energy that I get from it. If your stamina isn't up to working out that level or for that long yet, all you need is five minutes first thing in the morning. If I did five different exercises for one minute each, I could tell a huge difference in my, difference in my mindset and my energy. I can't make an excuse for not working out or doing something for five minutes. If I can't do something for five minutes, then I'm lazy. So don't be lazy. There's no reason you can't do something for five minutes a day. Make sure you are putting your focus on imp improving yourself and showing up for yourself. If you do, it will show up in your cell, in your work ethic, and your attitude. The first tip is reading or listening to something that makes you better, makes you learn something and challenges you. Soak up something so you're improving yourself and you're learning. It is so, so important to read or listen to something that is something great people do. And we might as well pattern ourselves after money. And we might as well pattern ourselves after people who've been great. After people who are the top salespeople in the world, the top individuals in the world. I want to pattern myself after someone who's awesome and great so that I can too be awesome and great. The fourth tip is writing your goals down. You don't have to be perfect at it. I'm not. But it's a great success tip. I write my goals on every single day. Writing, write big goals down too. I'm not talking about these little dinky goals. I'm talking about big, freakish, massive goals. I'm talking about goals that when you wake up, you jump out of bed because you're so excited to go to the office to get in front of prospects and sell. I'm talking about goals like mine where my company will do a $100 million company one day. A lot of people will doubt me, but I've got goals. And I'm going to stick to them. What are your goals? Write them down every morning. Throw in a long-term goal, a short-term goal, and any other goals that you want. I always have a goal for every month, every year, and long-term. Like every month, I have a goal that I want to increase my income. And I write it down. I also write down what I want my income to be for the year. By writing down your goals, you start to think bigger. 
I'm telling you, it's so infectious. Our brains think small, so small. And we're capable of so much more. When we start thinking big, it's unreal how capable we are of doing massive stuff. I promise you in 10 years, I will look back on the Cody Askins today and say that Cody thought small. I promise you because I'll be thinking so big by then that this Cody is a chump compared to the Cody of the future. So the success tips are to eat healthy food, work out, read or listen to something, write down your goals. If you do that, I promise you, it will affect you in a positive way. It will change you. It will make you the best you that you can be. If you're serious about success, you will implement these right away so that you can be the best you that you will possibly be. I want you to be great. I want you to be awesome. I want you to do what you're reading here to take you to the next level. If you implement these things along with other content you've been learning, then 100K, 250K, half a million dollars, a million bucks, doesn't matter. You can achieve any of it. I promise you. How to work with prospects. People are the key to this business. You can't sell insurance to a dog. You have to sell it to people. You can sell insurance on a dog, but you have to sell it to people. And to sell them, you have to know how to work with them. What makes them tick? What are their habits? What are the things they're absolutely going to do when you're trying to sell them? Let's find out. Five ways to prospect without being pushy. To hit these great goals, most salespeople think you have to be extremely pushy or aggressive, but you don't. There is a way to be aggressive in sales, but to do it in a respectful way. That doesn't feel like you're being aggressive or pushy. I have five different ways to prospect and sell more and capitalize on sales without being pushy. Prospects can feel when you are being pushy, just like if you are smiling on the phone with them, they can feel your smile. They can feel if you have their best interest in mind. They can feel if you're trying to sell them. So what do you do instead? Remove the pressure. You are there to educate and inform them. It is your job to provide them with information. Let them know that if they do business or not with you, that's okay. They don't have to do anything today. Ask them, what is it that got them thinking about life insurance or whatever it is you're trying to sell them? Now you have moved around the objection and have proceeded on the path to selling. Just remember to remove pressure so it doesn't sound like a high pressure situation. You are their problem solver. It needs to feel like you're educating, informing, and assisting them. Do some things that will take the pressure off and put them at ease. This could be as simple as where to sit in the room or accepting a glass of water when they offer it to you. Anything that can you can do so during the sale, it doesn't feel like you are hardcore selling stuff. Take your time. All sales, for me, are typically 45 minutes to an hour and a half. I'm in no hurry because I'm building a relationship. It's the most important piece of a sale. So slow down, be relaxed, make sure you're getting to know them and warm up. Take this time to fact find before you present and close. You don't want to give them a quote in just the first two minutes or the first four minutes of being there. I'm not trying to sell them. This is selling without being pushy. Once you realize that relationship is the most important thing to any sell, you're on your way. Let the prospect do the talking. This is by far my favorite one. People think that to be a good sales and selling, they need to talk a lot or puke or vomit or, or regurgitate a ton of words or say this special phrase. You don't. You do not need to have the gift of gab. You simply need to let them talk. Remember that the person doing most of the talking is not always in control of the conversation. This is a myth. You need them talking. Typically, when I typically when my prospect talks more than I do, I make the sell. When I talk more than they do, I don't sell because I'm trying to tell them instead of simply asking questions. I believe I should let them talk. If you focus on and think that, you actually ask questions and listen. Then they will tell you why you are going to be selling them today. If you let them communicate, they will tell you everything you need to know. The key, is, key to this is to ask great questions. Ask open-ended questions like, what got you thinking about this? When do you plan on doing something like this? What does this look like for you? If you were to do it in one year from now, what would your business or personal life look like? You want to get them thinking and talking. 
The whole point of a cell is that it is a path to ask to, to get them and take them really from point A to point B. As an agent, I'm asking questions to get to know where you are. Literally selling yourself for me. Make your prospect more comfortable. Some of you may be wondering how to do this. We've talked about it. Build the relationship, use humor, ask the right questions, talk about their family, talk about things that they want to talk about. Agents like to think people buy because of how great we are or how great our company is or the product. Prospects don't care. They don't buy price, products, or the company. They buy, what do they buy? Think about it for a second. You. They buy you because you provide a solution. They buy your commitment. They buy the belief that you will help them in a certain way. They are buying into you. Your belief, conviction, and confidence, they will end up buying from you. But remember, this won't happen instantly. Not in the first two minutes, not in the first four minutes. It will take time because they will need to feel comfortable. You need to smile, to laugh, and you need to chill the freak out sometimes instead of being so over the top salesy and aggressive. So stop acting crazy. Just pause. Take a step back and say, if this was going to take one hour, what would the next hour look like? Not you beating them up for an hour. That's now how sales works. Focus on their problems, not your product. Focus on what your problem can do for them, not the actual product. Think about what you being there selling them this solution can do for them and their family. Because that is all you are doing when you're in sales. You are selling them a solution to their problem. This means you better believe in your product and what it can do for them. You better have that confidence and that certainty in your product. Do not confuse this with talking about your product. When you are talking about your product, you're being selfish and greedy and talking about yourself. Talk about the solution and them. How can this help them? How can this solve their problems? If they're worried about final expenses being covered, what their income will be if their husband passes away, paying off their mortgage, then these are the things that you should be talking about. If they're worried about getting cancer, some other health issue, or a car blowing up, then these are the problems you've told me about in your life. And we have the solutions to solve your problems. No one wants a pushy, aggressive salesperson that isn't listening to them. Someone who is just trying to push a product on them. Don't be that salesperson. We've covered a lot of ground here in chapter one. So let's do a quick recap and write this awesomeness down. It will help. Start with your morning. Do you have a morning routine? If not, make one. If you already have one, great. How well does it align with the Daily Power Five? If it doesn't, tweak it. Are you in the 5 a.m. club? Are you working out? Do you write down your goals? Are you learning new things every day and training on those things you've learned? Are you pushing yourself to do something that you don't want to do? Like the cold shower as an example. I see you shaking your head. Now, make adjustments and move forward. Making those adjustments to your daily morning routine should help you get into the right frame of mind. But in case it doesn't, make sure you check your attitude. While you're checking things, what is your action or activity level like? Are you slacking or leave it all on the table? As we talked about, when you're doing the things that you need to be doing, you are focused and present. Are you attentive? If not, you know what you need to do. How coachable are you? Are you going to read this and think, yeah, I got this, Cody? Or are you going to take what I'm telling you and put it to work for you? You have the courage and the commitment to do what it takes every day, day in and day out. Are you slacking? Are you confident, certain and consistent? Do you have the conviction that it needs and takes to make and close your sales? Last, when it comes to prospecting, how are you measuring up? Remember to remove the pressure, take the time to build a relationship with them and let them do the talking, but stay in control of the conversation. Put them at ease and make them feel comfortable. You're a human, not a robot. So don't act like one. Don't forget to focus on their problems and how you can be a problem solver for them. End of chapter one. Okay, so as you're thinking about this chapter and as we're, we're debriefing about mindset and a routine and how to control your attitude and activity and how to be a better salesperson and, you know, how you're prospecting. And we covered a lot in just the first chapter, by the way, okay? I want you to choose something, one thing that you learned that you liked. I want you to take it. I want you to implement it immediately this week. And then I want you to choose something else in chapter two once we record 
chapter two as well. You can go check out Zero to Six Figures on Amazon. You can buy the book. Uh, it's under 20 bucks. You can have it shipped to you in a couple days. You can read ahead. You can listen and you can evolve. And you too can go from zero to six figures and be a rising star. See you on the next podcast episode. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. I mean, I, I, I know of, like I, I talked to other folks uh, who yes. are doing similar things that I'm doing on the call center side, um, who they have agents who have written 400, 500, 600, 800,000 dollars a year. Latin.